Welcome everybody, uh, my name is uh, Phil Owen, I am the uh, Service Delivery Director at uh, the Chartered Trading Standards Institute and today we're talking about the essential guide for businesses which is the PASS 7050, bringing safe products to market. And with me today is uh, Mark Gardner and also Geraldine uh, Koch. Uh, these are both uh, product safety standards experts. Welcome to you both. Thank uh, you. Mark, perhaps you'd like to tell the audience a little about yourself. Okay, thank you, Phil. Um, thank you for inviting me to talk about this. So, my name's Mark Gardner. Um, I'm a product safety specialist. I've been working in product regulation for nearly 35 years. Um, 28 of those years was in trading standards um, as an investigator and manager. Um, in the last seven years, I've been a product safety consultant but also market surveillance consultant, and my specialisms are conformity assessment, but also product risk. Thank you. Geraldine. Thanks, Phil, and thanks, Mark, for having me here. So very briefly, I'm Geraldine Kosh, as mentioned. I'm a product safety expert, been working in product safety for 20 years. I've been doing lots of different activities, doing lots of training <laughs> sessions, having the privilege of working with the both of you, and also I was fortunate enough to be the technical author of PAS 7050. Very good, thank you very much. Well, so we're here to talk about the past 7050. A um, little bit of background for the audience. Basically, the journey of the past 7050 started in 2011. Uh, and then in 2018, the Office for Product Safety and Standards produced uh, their safety strategy. Uh, and in that, uh, it mentioned how they were going to assist and help businesses to make sure they complied uh, with product safety laws and standards. In 2019, the first initiation meeting uh, kicked off for the delivery of this PASS 7050. And in 2022, um, the PASS 7050 was published. So let's tell the audience a little mm. bit about what the PASS 7050 is and how does it contribute to assuring uh, safe products in the market? Mark, okay. do you want to kick off? Yeah, yeah, okay, Phil. Well, um, product safety legislation is complicated. It's, it can appear impenetrable to those who have to comply with it. Um, and so what PAS 7050 does is, is, is try to decode the principles of that. So the management of risk prior to a product being placed on the market. That's what regulations are designed to do. But in fact, that's what the PAS uh, basically breaks down into stages, into processes for manufacturers, for importers, for distributors to actually provide them with a, a, a quick reference and a methodology for reducing the risk that they place an unsafe product on the market to a tolerable level. If they follow the PAS, then they are doing everything they should be doing and there will be some technical requirements that they have to comply with in addition to that, but actually it provides a, 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 a route map for want of a better word, for those, those businesses to ensure that they place safe products on the market. Thank you. Uh, Geraldine, have you got anything to add to that? Yeah, definitely. So the steering group, which a massive thanks to the steering group, which you were both part of, and even the year's worth of experience that we have alone, just the three of us here together, helped produce that PAS. But if you think of the steering group members, there was 29 steering group members, a huge wealth of knowledge and experience, all in one document. Mm. And I think that's another mm. phenomenal thing that the PAS brings. If you really don't know where to start, which it can be overwhelming, yeah. and you sometimes use the term like yeah. demystifying. Yes, yes, And yes. it really helps with that. And I think it's a good place to start. If you just pick it up, you can look at the annexes, you can use it as like an agenda for a meeting or a gap analysis, just where do we start and how do we take on this mammoth task mm. of bringing safe products to market. Right, okay. And what, do you, what would you say to, to, to big or larger businesses who say, oh, well, we've got our regulatory experts, yeah. we've, we've got all the plans yeah. we need. What, what would we, we say to those uh, organisations? Is it is past 70-50 for them as well? Oh, it's, it's relevant for everybody because you can have all the processes in the world, but actually you may miss something. Mm -hmm. You may be able to simplify it. You may be doing more than you need to. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've been involved in this, this sector for many years, but every time I look at PAS, I think about things differently and, 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 and listening to other people. And that as, as Geraldine says, the experience they brought mm. to that room made me think about certain 
elements of the legislation, certain elements of the legal requirements mm. slightly differently. So whether you're a big business or a small business, there will be something that is informative and useful in the document for you. And I think it's great if you're a, whatever the size of the business is, if you're doing the right thing and you're doing it well, then this is almost confirmation of that. Yeah. Mm. So you can work through it and say, oh, actually, we've got this, you know, we've got it sorted, but let's document it, which is key for everything. We all do great things, yeah. but if you don't document it, mm. you don't have the evidence. So use it as that, as a, as a starter to assure that you're doing the right thing. Good. Yeah, and I, I like the, the point there, you could use it as a bit of a gapper yeah. analysis, couldn't yeah, you? Yeah, 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 you know. yeah. Uh, to make sure that, that the goods are, are safe and for, it, for market. It's easy to get caught up in the, yeah. the technical detail of legal requirements and sometimes overdo it mm. uh, without actually having that impact on product risk, um, you know, box ticking and, and, and things like that. And actually it gives you that overview that says, well, this is what we're trying to achieve. This mm. is the, 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 the high level process and, and can, we, can we do it better? Can we do it more efficiently, more effectively? Good, thank you. Um, Graham Russell from OPSS, Office of Product Safety and Standards, he's the CEO there, he, he mentioned recently there's an increasing complexity of product supply chains. So why is there a need for a guide uh, like PASS 7050 and how does it address the challenges businesses face in bringing safe products to market? The supply chains have got um, more and more complex with, with, with quite often businesses who, who don't actually have possession of products taking responsibility mm -hmm. for them. The market in the UK has changed, where, the mar where products are placed on the market has changed as a result of wider issues. Um, but um, it, it needs to be that everybody manages their, the risk and, and their, have ownership of the, the risk within that supply chain. So if you are an importer, or a manufacturer or just a distributor, you need to understand what you need to do to make sure that what's being placed on the market, what's being sold is a safe product, is in conformity. Um, and particularly with e-commerce, there are sections on uh, marketplaces and things like that within the PAS to, to give them more guidance on what, you know, what they can do to assure safety. Thank you. Yeah, and, and I'm a consumer, we're all consumers, and I love the convenience of not having to leave home sometimes and things getting delivered to you in whatever way you choose to purchase your products, but we should all have the right to have safe products. You know, as, con as consumers, as parents, as, you know, caregivers, as consumers full stop, right? In our homes, we want to keep our home safe and our mm. family and friends safe. And no matter where you are in the economic supply chain, in the, as an economic operator, you need to ensure you're, you're selling safe products. Thank you. Uh, so PASS 7050 was developed by uh, bringing together experts from various backgrounds, as mm. you mentioned, Geraldine. Mm. So how does that collaboration contribute to the effectiveness of the guide and what insights can businesses gain from it? Um, we all learn this <laughs> role as we go along. No, the, nobody really has that um, you know, university training where you're going to be in charge of product safety or a risk manager in relation to supply, design, production, and all those kind of things. And actually, most of us have learned through mistakes. Mm. And the mistakes we've made, where things haven't gone to plan, where we've learned from a particular incident, or, or uh, and actually everybody brought that knowledge, that understanding, that learning to the table and shared it. And, and that's why it's of particular use, because it saves other people making the same mistakes that many of us did. Yeah, and we had 29 members, as mentioned, and consensus <coughs> is key when you're developing standards. I'm not going to say it's easy. Of course it's not when you've got that many people, but it was great to get to a point where we all had reached consensus and developing yeah. this pass. Good, good. I um, want to talk briefly about another complementary standard mm. uh, code of practice now, the PASS 7100, yeah. product recalls and other corrective actions. So we've also got that uh, particular um, PASS 7100 in the mix, focusing on the recalls. How do these two standards complement each other and why is it crucial for businesses to be aware of both? Um, well, quite simply, they, they, they relate to different stages in the production and supply chain. So PASS 7050 is about ensuring that products are safe when they're placed on the market. But with the greatest will in the world, sometimes things go wrong 
there can be unforeseen issues in terms of use or, or there were there were mistakes in production or design or or even some other issue and the worst time to try to plan for that is when it's already happened so 70 uh, 7 100 is about planning that contingency plan for if things go wrong if you never have to use it then it's still not a wasted effort because it's been there and, and actually it helps um, uh, refine your 7050 um, processes because you've got to think about traceability and things like that and that will assist you. Yeah, PAS 7050 is the product safety management plan so it talks about the PSMP so the product safety management plan this overarching process and PAS 7100 is just one part of this process and it talks about the product safety incident plan so the PSIP so you've got the overarching and then you've got the specific for when things go wrong and it's about being prepared both of them are. Good, thank you. So um, we know as we spoke about uh, we've got a very evolving landscape mm. uh, of product distribution and I know recently uh, Geraldine uh, we've been involved in uh, revisions yeah. uh, of the past 7050 and to some extent the 7100 to include online marketplaces repair and refur refurbishment yeah. and also second hand mm -hmm. so how, how do these changes enhance the effectiveness of this uh, code of practice yeah fundamentally those parts within the PAS is that they're quite short and brief mm. and to the point basically it's they should have a product safety management plan in place or they should have a product safety incident plan in place and the reality is is they all need to work together wherever you are in the economic um, as an operator economic operator or in the supply chain you have a responsibility for safety and quite often we see people saying, you know, well, that's not mine, it's theirs. And there's a lot of finger pointing going on. Well, actually, it's a team effort and you all have a role to play. So within the PASs, we talk about the concept of the product safety management plan and incident plan. And you need to take from it the recommendations and make it fit wherever you are in that supply chain. And it, it's also to a certain extent about the recognition of the way the market's changing, the, you know, the, the circular market. Um, you know, in terms of second-hand refurbishment, but you know that the the, the the online marketplace market can sit, continues to evolve in in, mm. in new ways all the time. And it's about ensuring that everybody understands, as Geraldine says, they have that part to play. They have a responsibility because mm. the consumer is not interested in what sits behind. Mm. They're interested in is my product safe or not, and if there's a problem, will I be contacted? Will I be able to send it back or, or what have you? So it's about ensuring that all of that ties together. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, go on, sorry. I was gonna say, just the key thing is about testing that relationship, yeah. right? Whether you have a, a personal relationship or professional, when something goes wrong, and we talk about the crisis simulation and, and having that, and then really testing who's gonna be there to support you, no matter where they are. Mm. No, so, so those, smaller businesses out there we yeah. all know that that to do online trading yeah. uh, and, and also uh, second-hand market yeah. and you know there is a as you as you say because the cost of living issues at the moment yeah. there's a, a lot of businesses started up with repair and refurbishment so yeah. they, they might be listening to this and thinking oh pass is not really past 750 is not for me but it is isn't it yeah. even even if it because uh, it the, the, the past talks about all these different yeah. aspects for business, doesn't it? Definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, if you're in the supply chain, then product safety yeah. is your responsibility. You can't pass it up, you can't pass it down. You've got to take play your part in that. Yeah. Right, so um, last couple of points. I want to look at you know practical implications for business mm. and, and what other uh, ways that we've, we've been able to work with uh, the Office of Product Safety uh, and standards uh, and CTSI in producing, you know, some um, uh, different products to, to to help with the implementation. So, for the businesses tuning in, then, what are first of all the practical implications of implementing the past 7050, and how can adherence to this guide positively impact the operations and, more importantly, consumer safety? Okay, so as as I said at the beginning, it is it's a risk management methodology and if you manage your risk you're not just managing risk in relation to products you're you're managing 
your commercial risk in relation to having to take corrective actions or selling things that you you know that are different to what you expect them to be so it, it's um, uh, quite simply if you follow both passes mm -hmm. then you are getting a much better handle on managing what a you know a multitude of business risks than you would be if you, if, if you didn't so um, you know if you have to do a corrective action as uh, under 7100 if you've already planned for it then it will be much more coherent you'll have better traceability you'll probably be recalling fewer products mm -hmm. and doing it in a much more effective and probably cheaper way you won't have a lot of um, panicking for want of a better word um, when you you're presented with this because you'll have a plan you'll have a clear plan there will also be uh, a reduced impact on your business um, uh, reputation mm -hmm. because businesses that actually uh, get it get it right or do everything they can to get it right are much more likely to succeed than those that oh well we'll, we'll leave that and see what happens and I think if the thought of implementing this is overwhelming then I would just start with the annexes so have a look at the annexes, go to the business companion, so the CTSI business companion, where you can download the annexes of PAS 7050 in an editable format and just start. It doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to use the same naming convention that's mentioned. It's, it's recommendation, so have a look at them and just start with that and see what processes you already have in place. And you might be doing a lot better than you actually realise. Uh, and many businesses are following yeah. this, but maybe, yeah. maybe not as, uh, as stru in such a structured or coherent yeah. way. And it may just help to refine that, make yeah. it better, you know. Good, good. So, um, yeah, the Office of Product Safety and Standards yes. have, have actually uh, paid for uh, or to allow small businesses to actually gain a free copy, haven't yes, they? They yeah. go to the uh, British Standards Institution yes. uh, website, they can get that. However, you referred a few minutes ago, uh, Geraldine, to the Business Companion, yeah. that's a, a CTSI um, uh, website. If businesses want to, to, to go on that, just put Business Companion in yeah, into to, to whatever yeah. uh, web uh, site they're using, and that that will go. And that we put an awful lot of information about yeah. pass yeah. on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you are also conducting quite a few webinars, aren't you, yes. for businesses? We are. Yes. 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 So yeah. um, that's good as well. And we've just recorded a version yeah. of the webinar yeah. in case smaller businesses aren't able to access the actual live yeah. webinars. Yeah, yeah. And, and covering covering the detail that we haven't got the opportunity yeah. to cover today. Yeah. Um, and hopefully that they you know they, they will lead people in the you know the right direction yeah. to having an understanding and maybe a better understanding of their own processes. Yeah. So we're talking to businesses and they want to go onto the CTSI website. There's access there to uh, the online uh, w uh, the webinars and also uh, the information that's been put on the, uh, the business companion um, in regards to past 7050. Um, but overall as well, we've just developed a specific training program, haven't yeah. we? Yeah, really uh, for, for businesses yeah. who, who want to really delve into this more and really yeah. get a good yeah. understanding. Yeah. The, um, it's behind us the business certificate in competency in product, product safety. safety. Yeah. Yeah, so we're looking forward to, to delivering yeah. that. And, yes. and as that, that's going to cover all these yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I mean uh, that's, that's really drilling down to the the, the, the detail of, uh, of particular legislation, but also having having processes in place within your business to ensure that you get it right, and and when things go wrong, that you're in a in a position to put that right very quickly. And I think that training is it's about education and empowering yourself and you know getting information but it's also about the network not only the network of your peers that are on the course with you but the expert speakers that we're bringing in we're trying to get them mixed and varied so that you know where to go because it can be quite an isolating role being on your role in owning product safety and maybe you don't have a a chemical expert or an expert in another topic so by being on this course you're going to expand your network which will be key in the event if you have to you know face a corrective action so good, good. So just to round up there, is there any final comments you want to be able to say to businesses? Nothing other than um, to, to recommend that businesses look at 7050 and 7100 and, mm -hmm. and, and take a look at what they're doing within their businesses to, to design their products, to manufacture them, to distribute them, and also what happens in the aftermarket. And if you look at the, the, those um, documents and you think, yeah, I'm doing all that, then good. But if you're not, then maybe there's some gaps to fill, which will help you do business better. 
required. Yeah, so, so definitely download the PASs. They're free to download, yeah. again, as you mentioned, thanks to OPSS. And also have a look at the Business Companion website and download these annexes and make a start. Yeah. Well, thank you both. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you, Geraldine, for coming yeah. and uh, sharing all these brilliant insights. Um, so uh, the business is out there. If you want to learn more about this guide, make sure you check out the official publication from the British Standards Institution uh, and also uh, the uh, business companion uh, and also the training that's available um, on PASS 7050 from, from CTSI. All those uh, links will be put in the description to this um, video. So until next time, thank you very much, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, thank you.